All right, let's talk a little bit about ideal solutions and what exactly that means. So in chemistry, there are different kinds of solutions. Okay, a solution is really nothing more than two things that are mixed together in a homogeneous fashion so that everything is evenly distributed between everything else. Okay, and so typically there's a solute and there's a solvent. And the one that you have the more, most of is the solvent. And the one they have the least of is the solute. But the solute and the solvent could have different phases. Okay, so here's a table that shows some of these different relationships. Okay, so for example, both the solute and the solvent can both be gases, in which case the whole thing is a gas. For example, air or natural gas is really a solution of many different gases present. For example, air has in it nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide and water vapor and argon, a bunch of other things in there. Or you can have a gas that's dissolved in a liquid, in which case the solution phase is also a liquid. Okay, think of club soda, right, which is carbonated soda. It has carbon dioxide dissolved in water. Another example is something called artificial blood, right? They use this in like movies and things, okay? Um, to simulate blood, but also in hospitals or research, you can have oxygen dissolved in perfluorodecalin. Or you can have liquids for both the solutes and the solvent. Okay, and so one of my favorite examples, okay, vodka is really a mixture of ethanol and water, okay, all in the same phase. You could also have a solid dissolved in a liquid. For example, a saline solution, right, salt water has sodium chloride dissolved in water. Or you can have a gas dissolved in a solid. This is a little bit rarer, but you can have something called hydrogen gas adsorbed on palladium, right on the surface of PD metal. <clears throat> or you can even have um, solids dissolved in each other. Okay, and so these are, for example, amalgams with mercury in them or, or other solids. Okay, so for example, 14 karat gold is really a mixture of silver and gold. Okay, and so it's a solid solute and a solid solvent, altogether still solid. Okay, and these alloys. So let's think about the energies of forming these different solutes. Okay, you can have solvent molecules together, and you can have solute molecules together. And now I have to put the solute and the solvent in the same place at the same time. So let's think about the solvent first. Okay, the solvent molecules are all happy doing their thing. They're all next to each other. I have to separate all of those solvent molecules from each other. And then the solute molecules are also together in the same place at the same time. I have to separate all of those solute molecules from each other. Okay, both of those separations require energy because probably the solvent molecules are attracted to each other by certain intermolecular forces. And the solute molecules are also attracted to each other by certain intermolecular forces. And I'm trying to break them apart. So I have to add enough energy to kind of overcome all of these attractive intermolecular forces. But then when I put them together, right, when I put the solute and the solvent together, maybe they experience some new intermolecular forces. And they like each other even more than they would have if they were just next to other solute molecules or other solvent molecules. Okay, and so there's a favorable interaction between the solute and the solvent as the solution comes together. And so I really have to think about each of these three steps. Okay, what's going to happen to the total energy of the solution? I have to look at the change in enthalpy for the first step when I separate the solvent, and then the second step when I separate the solute. And then I have to think about the third step when I bring the solvent and the solute together. And my total delta H is just going to be the sum of these individual three steps. So I used the word ideal earlier. Okay, what exactly does it mean to be ideal? Well, you saw earlier, there are really three types of interactions between the solute and the solvent, between the solute and the solute, and between the solvent and the solvent. Let's just use letters like A and B. Okay, and so it doesn't really matter which is which, but let's say A is the solute and B is solvent. Okay, so these are my three interactions. If the solution is ideal, 
then the magnitudes of all these interactions are all exactly the same. Okay, and so the word ideal here is a little bit different than the ideal in the ideal gas law. For the ideal gas law, I assumed that there were zero interactions, right? There were no attractions or repulsions whatsoever between the gas molecules, zero, okay? For solutions, I acknowledge that they exist, right? I can't completely ignore them because otherwise solution would never form in the first place. But what I'm saying is, even though they exist, they're all of equal magnitude, so they kind of cancel each other out. Okay, so it doesn't matter who the neighbor is. The interaction between the solute and the solvent is the same as between the solute and the solute, or the solvent and the solvent. Okay, so I'm not disregarding these intermolecular forces, but I'm just saying that they're all of equal magnitude. It doesn't matter who is interacting with whom.